It is finally here. It's time to put up or shut up. Will Michigan have bragging rights for yet another year in a vastly changing Big Ten and college football uh, outlook, landscape? Or will it go back to what it was before with added scorn? Let's preview the game. Locked on Wolverines podcast. You are locked on Wolverines. Your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Friday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire. Through USA Today Sports Media Group, I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving, but we are really getting into it here. Michigan versus Ohio State is a reality. In 24 hours-ish from now, the two teams will finally clash on the field instead of fans on message boards, on Twitter, and social media in general. We're finally going to have toe meeting leather. And the more I talk about the game, it's kind of funny. The more I talk about the game... And any time that I, I'm, I'm talking to, maybe, maybe it's a colleague from a fan site, which means that they're a little bit more, you know, fan oriented rather than being like a, a newspaper man who, you know, came from Sui City or something like that, you know, uh, or someone in the program or whatever, whatever it is, right? Anytime that I've gotten to talk about this game and I share my thoughts about what Michigan has going for it versus what Ohio State has going for it. I feel better than when I'm just sitting idle reading other people's stuff. And I think it's really funny because if you think back to maybe a month-ish ago, there was probably no doubt in any Michigan fan that win number three in a row was certain to happen. But now, because of a lot of the stuff that's happened off-field, because of Jim Harbaugh being sidelined, because of J.J. McCarthy's performance against Maryland, because the defense couldn't stop Talia Tagovailoa for about two quarters, seemingly coinciding with the wind, suddenly it doesn't feel quite as certain that Michigan will be able to do what it needs to do. And I, I say need, it needs to. It, it's kind of a funny thing when you look at pressure. Because if it was Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines, I would say that there is no pressure on Michigan in a normal sense. If everything that happened starting before the Michigan State game hadn't happened, I'd say there was no pressure on Michigan. However, that's changed a bit. Shrown Moore trying to be guardian of victory while wearing three hats at once. Uh, Michigan defend, players defending their honor with all of the allegations of, quote, cheating that you hear from talking heads, rival fans, all of that. All of that kind of changes the dynamic on Michigan's side from what it was before. On the other side, Ryan Day has the most immense, as in the most immense pressure that one could have in this game. As much as there will be a lot of national people out there who will say, under no circumstances he can he get fired for losing this game, look at his overall record. It doesn't matter in the state of Ohio. Actually, let me rephrase. It doesn't matter in the state of Columbus. It doesn't. Losing three in a row to Michigan, being one and three against Michigan. Especially in a year like this where college football playoff, yes, it's going to expand in, in future years. Ohio State could lose this game, not go to the Big Ten Championship. It would go to the Big Ten Championship in this particular year if it was next year's format. Well, not notwithstanding that Washington would have a say, right? But it's they would have that opportunity to go and avenge everything in the college football playoff where this is a year where you lose no Indianapolis, Almost certainly no college football playoff. Certainly, the system can be gamed. You lose by one on the road. 
Maybe they keep you in striking distance. Maybe they only move you down to number five. Maybe they have, have you over Florida State, undefeated, whatever. It will take a lot more help to get Ohio State or Michigan, whoever loses the game, into the college football playoff this year compared to last year. Ryan Day, also knowing what he did in the offseason, whether it was this offseason or one previous, I don't have a timeline on that. He knows what he did. It's a move that reeks of desperation. He is desperate. He was desperate enough to fire his already really good offensive uh, line coach in Greg Studrawa coming out of the 2021 game. He was desperate enough as well coming out of that game to get rid of favorite son, Kerry Combs, and bring in Jim Knowles. Much like last year, it's paid dividends through 11 games. But last year, it paid dividends through 11 games, not 12. Does Michigan have an ace up its sleeve? Can Sharon Moore oversee the offense, the offensive line, and the head coaching duties in a game of this magnitude all at once? Well, he has some experience against Penn State. That's weirdly a bonus. If Sharon Moore got the reins before Maryland, he would have no idea what it's like to undertake all of that. And I know there's a lot of people out there that will say, well, I don't like his play calling. It was so conservative. After having had some conversations over the last few days, I've been told that that ended up being by design, not because he wanted to be conservative, but maybe, just maybe, letting a free-rushing Chop Robinson at an injured J.J. McCarthy was not of Michigan's best interest. It was forward thinking, while also thinking in the moment. How, with that in mind, how will Carson Barnhart rebound after what's been two really bad games? Will Michigan make a change? How is the health for Miles Hinton? Sharon Moore says all of the injured parties are ready to go. But how much of that is bluster and how much of that is reality? Michigan will face a lot of challenges this game that it has not faced already. However, the good news is it's faced most of them to some degree. It's faced a good running game with Penn State, Katron Allen, and Nick Singleton. Let up so many yards, but kept them from the end zone for the most part. Or entirely. I don't remember who scored. Drew Aller? I don't remember. Ohio State has an offense that does not like to score touchdowns when it gets in the red zone. Michigan has a defense that does not like you to score touchdowns when you get in the red zone, if you get there at all. But Ohio State has a seemingly healthy Travion Henderson who doesn't need to get in the red zone. Michigan sometimes lets backs get out there into space. Cannot let that happen in this game. To me, Michigan versus Travion Henderson is more important than Michigan versus Marvin Harrison Jr. They're both important. We're literally splitting hairs here. But the ability to stop Travion Henderson allows Michigan to tee off on Kyle McCord because that is the difference. Being able to stop one guy is stopping one guy, and that's Travion Henderson. In order to stop Marvin Harrison, it's not just about keeping him from catching the ball, being good in coverage. It's also about disrupting Kyle McCord, who has seen hostile territory, having gone to Notre Dame, he will not have seen or felt anything like what he's about to experience. We're going to continue our preview and then eventually get to our prediction of the game in segment three. And we're going to do that here in just a moment. Before we do, passion, drive, and patience, which brings home the winning trophy, what wins you the Big Ten Championship, is also what keeps your, well, not exactly equating it, is also keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, 
eBay Motors has got you covered. So with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. I know people like to make fun of how I quantify sources and such. <laughs> I've seen that more and more lately on the board. Uh, when I go on, I try not to go on them. It's, it's not fun reading even positive things about yourself sometimes. It's not fun to read it. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, I, I do. I, I had heard from a third party source. Again, I the reason why I quantify these things, I want you to know, like, Am I speaking to the person directly? Am I speaking to someone in the building? Am I speaking to someone who's speaking to someone else in the building? Yada, 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 right? This is the latter, okay? Um, I am speaking to, to some people in the building, but I haven't asked the specific question. This was proffered to me, and I'm going to offer it to you. This would be really encouraging when coupled with a closer source. So I had heard this morning that J.J. McCarthy basically did not practice at all last week going into the Maryland game, which could explain some of the rust, essentially. It mix injury plus rust equals not great. Now, I had spoken to someone who is in the building, and they said that he is practicing and looks fine. They really wouldn't go beyond that. They're, so it's not like, oh, he only looks fine? No, I mean, they just wouldn't. It was just more of like, how, how is he looking? Is he, is he out there? Is he doing it? Is he, you know, is he looking all right? Yeah, he's moving all right. Everything's good. OK, so that could explain something because Michigan's going to need J.J. McCarthy to have. I wouldn't say his best game. People say he needs to have his best game. I don't think that's true. He didn't have his best game last year, but he had timely throws, right? He was 12 of 24, which if you reverse that, it's, you know, kind of fun because it's the same score as the uh, 1969 Michigan, Ohio State game. Michigan doesn't need J.J. McCarthy to be at his best. It needs him to be at his best in moments. It's kind of the same for Blake Horm and Donovan Edwards, both healthy in this game for the first time. You keep in mind, Blake Horm played in 2021, but had not played against Penn State or Maryland that year. Uh, did not play, in, well, he played two snaps in the game last year. Now he's fully healthy. Donovan Edwards had a club on his hand, couldn't catch. That could be a big mismatch. Get him involved against the linebackers. Between the tight ends and Donovan Edwards, Michigan is completely content at driving the field, right? Ohio State is the more of the team that would prefer to not do that. They'd prefer to have big explosive plays, but this year has not necessarily come quite to the same degree it has in uh, previous years. Let's take a look at that real quick because I am curious myself. We're going to go long scrimmage plays, and we're going to go to, to this year. We're going to bump it up to 30-plus yards. Um, Ohio State's 42 in the country with 26 plays of 30 yards plus. If you go to last year, they were fifth. What, what did I say it was, 32? They had 42 last year. 2021, Ohio State was fifth, 42. 2020, diff, weird year. Ohio State only had 30, but they had less games. 2019, 10th, 42. Just, so 42 is what Ohio State has at every point in time this year, pretty much. 2018, 42. 2017, 41. Ooh. <laughs> so that's, that's where they stand. This year, 42nd with 26. I said 32. Not nearly as explosive as far as that's concerned. 10 yard plays or, you know, 10 plus yard plays. Michigan's 51st, Ohio State's 57th. Not, not nearly what you would expect. 2020, let's go to 2021. Michigan had a really explosive offense, even in the 10 plus generally. Like when it came to big, big plays, Michigan was really high up there. 57th, which is where Ohio State sits now in 2021. Ohio State was third. 2022. 
Ohio State was 18th. Taking a little bit of a step back, Michigan was 36th. But right now, both are sitting there in the 50s. Michigan needs Roman Wilson to be healthy. It sounds like he is. Michigan has healthy running backs. Michigan has healthy tight ends. Michigan has some unhealthiness on the offensive line, which is not great. There is still depth. It's just waning a little bit on the ends. So you hope that they get that figured out. Ladarius Henderson will be back. Extremely good source told me that. Beyond Sharon Moore in his press conference. Health is of paramount importance here. Ohio State's pretty healthy on the other side. We don't know how Cal McCord was after he was limping after the couple hits against Minnesota. But we've done this already. We've gone through all of, all of these, you know, these different games that Michigan and Ohio State have played. Ohio State has played pretty much every game closer, with the exception of two when it comes to common opponents, than Michigan. Now, their games against Minnesota and against Michigan State were relatively similar to Michigan's games against both teams. Ohio State struggled more against Minnesota in the first half than Michigan did, but they did basically the same thing to Michigan State. Ohio State struggled more against Maryland in the first half, but then pulled away in the second. It was a tale of two halves for the opposite way for Michigan against Maryland. The Penn State game, despite being relatively close, really was not in question for Michigan. It was in question a little bit more for Ohio State, but still to some degree not fully in question. Rutgers played Ohio State closer. Indiana played Ohio State closer. Now, we can only glean so much from transitive property. This is an Ohio State team that takes a long time sometimes to kind of get its bearings against the other teams, okay? This is not an Ohio State team that strikes fast and early and often like we have often seen. I know, I know that's what people are going to kind of make of it quite often here, but that's not the case. When you look at the game against Indiana, they were up 10-3 to 3 at half. We're just going to scroll through some of this. Youngstown State, that was a little bit different. They were up 28 to 7 at half. That was the only one against an SES school. It was lopsided. I mean, Western Kentucky as well, big second quarter. Notre Dame, they're up 3 to nothing at half. Maryland, they're tied 10 10 at half. Maryland had a second half lead. Purdue, they had that game put away, 20 to nothing at half. Penn State, 10 to 6 at half. Wisconsin, 10 to 3 at half. Rutgers had a halftime lead, 9 to 7. Michigan State was more close to Michigan in the sense that they had a uh, 35 to 3 lead at half and they only scored three more points in the second. Michigan was about that, right? Scored a couple more times in the third than they did. And then Minnesota was 13 nothing at half. So they do not necessarily put the pedal to the metal in the same way that they used to. They have better second halves. That's something that you're accustomed to Michigan having. We don't know as much about Michigan in the second half because Michigan's had most games put away by halftime, with very few exceptions. Michigan, in order to win this game, needs to do that because we have also learned last week you can come back on Michigan in certain circumstances. Maryland certainly did, and they're the only ones who have. Third quarter, only team to actually do anything and kind of make it a game. All right, let's get to our prediction here in a moment. But before we do, say you're trying to find a ticket to the game. They're not going to be very cheap. I'm going to tell you that. But you shouldn't have to worry if you're trying to buy tickets to the game. Because game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater events near you. 
With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So, I mean, I don't know what you're waiting for. I'm going to do something that I haven't really done here, and we're going to try to look up uh, some stuff here on Game Time, because obviously, Buckeyes at Wolverines is the top one. I'm seeing tickets. You know, if you want, you want some seats. I mean, we're looking. I mean, again, I said it's not going to be cheap, but you've got 685, 392, 392 gets you in the door. Uh, 470, 481, and guess what? They've got deals, right? Like some of these are 519 down to 485, 513 down to 492. You've got some deals on some tickets, but those will get you in. Game time has got the tickets available for you. Do you want to sit 50 yard line by the tunnel? That's available to you. If you want to sit, uh, I mean, you can actually look at the map and figure out where you want to sit, how much you want to pay. All of that is there, right there on their website, GameTime.co. It's pretty incredible. Plus, you can click on it. You can see the actual view. You can determine, okay, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. All of that. It's perfect. So download the GameTime app or go to GameTime.co. Create an account. Use the promo code LOCKDOWNCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. So get even more off there. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So this is it. Michigan can silence a lot of critics with the, with a win in this one. A loss would be devastating to the narrative. And it is just the narrative. Let's just, that's not necessarily reality, right? But this whole, and when I say not necessarily, it isn't reality, but it's for all of the talk of sign stealing over the last month, obviously there's still Buckeyes out there saying cheating and putting out asterisks and all this stuff as if Ohio State is not actively involved in some shenanigans. I don't know the veracity of. Uh, some of the allegations, the milk, Venmo, and all of that, I don't know. Were they doing something exactly the same? It would not surprise me because some of these things are more prevalent in college football than many will lead you to believe. I do believe some of that stuff will be coming out in the near future via some national writers of other teams who engaged in literally the exact same practice that Connor Stallions had. But nonetheless, you beat Ohio State with an interim head coach. I mean, they will still be screeching, but they'll have no excuse. The rest of the college football world will certainly stand and take notice. Michigan can get Jim Harbaugh back next week on the sidelines, and it can go and do what it's set out to do. You have Michigan players who say, a loss in this game would render the season worthless. I agree. Especially given everything that's happened. I think it's been really interesting to watch how these players have acted. For Michigan, very loose, but very serious. Moments of levity and joking around. From what I've seen from the Ohio State players, it's been tight, tight, tight. Which will win out? I don't know. I've seen loose Michigan teams lose. But I think the good thing is Michigan has experience on its side in terms of winning the game. A handful of Michigan players have lost to Ohio State, and a handful of Ohio State players have beaten Michigan. But when it comes to the majority of the teams, that's not the case. How much is Xavier Johnson going to really uh, be able to rally his team as someone who's had the experience? Or Josh Proctor. Josh Proctor probably more than Xavier Johnson. But when it comes to a JT Tumalau, a Jack Sawyer, a Kyle McCord, a Marvin Harrison Jr., and a Mecca Ibuka, those guys don't know what it, what it takes to beat Michigan, at least not yet. Maybe they figure it out tomorrow. J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards, they don't know what it's like to lose to Ohio State. Michael Barrett does. Cornelius Johnson does. Roman Wilson doesn't. Carson Barnhart knows but he wasn't on that field in 2019. When I look at all of the advantages, and we talked about this on um, Wednesday's episode, when I look at all the advantages Michigan has, I feel like it just edges Ohio State out in a lot of ways. 
but you play the game for a reason. We've seen a lot of times where on paper it looks like a team should win. Ohio State certainly looked like it was a team that should win each of the last two years, but it didn't. Michigan needs to defend its honor. It needs to have the perfect game plan. It needs to have Sharon Moore able to execute that game plan while still paying attention to the nuance within the game. Being able to shift things and not be static. He's done it once. He did it against Penn State. Ohio State is a team that is prepared for all season long. No longer is it a team that gets Michigan attention, Michigan's attention the week of the game, the Sunday of the game. It gets Michigan's attention all season long, whether it's the players or the coaches, all year. I can venture to guess neither team is going to know each other's signs. For people who say that affects Michigan, you have to understand how much that affects Ohio State. Ryan Day thrives on this. I have been telling you since 2019. Ryan Day thrives on it. He will not know Michigan signs on Saturday. So what will it be? The team that wants it more. And I don't mean wants it more at the outset. Wants it more after the game has happened. Wants it more, I don't don't mean it happened to completion. After the game has kicked off, you're in the middle of the game, things are tight, if that is the case. Who wants it more? Who's going to dig deeper? Who's going to give everything they have? This is a game where legends are born. Donovan Edwards was already well thought of. He became a legend last year. Mike Sainer still became a legend last year. Just like Curtis Samuel... JT Barrett became legends in 2016. Dwayne Haskins became a legend in 2017 and 2018. Someone's got to step up for Michigan. Some, a lot of people got to step up for Michigan. You're tired of all the talk? You're tired of all the cheaters talk? Do something about it. The win against Penn State didn't do anything about it. It just made those who wanted to see the political hit job go through that much more staunch. Finish the job. People are not going to take lightly if the NCAA decides to do something. If Michigan beats Ohio State, beat, wins the Big Ten, and then the NCAA decides, you know what, we are going to have a say. The college football playoff has no bearing on that anyway. You want to be the national champion? Go out there and take it. No one's going to hand it to you. You have to go out there and take it. And the only way you can do that is by beating Ohio State. Because if you don't, no one's going to remember wins against Michigan State or Penn State. All they're going to remember is a season that's been clouded with turmoil. So what do I have? I have Michigan winning. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. I think Michigan jumps out and then finds a way to just kind of keep going. And I think that it will get tight at times, but experience in winning wins out. I have Michigan winning 27 to 16. Because as I told you earlier in the week, I talked to a former coach and he said, I think Michigan's going to win and it's not going to be close. I think last year the score even though it could have been 52 to 23. I think that game was a lot closer than that. I think this will be a game that will be a lot closer than Michigan's, what Michigan's able to do. But it's not going to be as emphatic, I don't think, either as it was in 2021. So that's it. Enjoy the game. We will be back probably on Saturday with some post game at some point. But uh, we'll talk to you then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. Peace.